Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please do subscribe. And if you're old here, hello again. My name is Kate Philpott and I cover true crime cases on my channel. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different, but I did do this one time before on my channel and based on the analytics, people kind of liked it. So like I mentioned two videos ago, I will be doing more kind of missing person cases and more recent things in the weeks where I'm not doing like the really long in-depth cases. So since I wanted to do TikTok related stuff, I thought I'd put those cases in TikToks and then add it to the start of this video. But anyway, you can now sit back, relax and enjoy like 15 of my TED Talks. <laughs> Before you keep scrolling, have you seen this map? This is Joshua Jones who went missing from Matlock in Derbyshire in England. He's been missing for five weeks now. He was last seen wearing a grey super dry coat which had sleeves darker than the torso and the hood was green on the inside. He may have been trying to catch a lift to Chesterfield so that's also an important location but his wife just needs to know that he's okay. Also thank you to Lily who let me know about this case. Click the plus sign for any updates or any other missing person alert because the next one might be near you. If you went missing, you'd want people to pay attention to the TikTok about you. So even if all you do is watch this right to the end, that will massively help it get out there. Maybe we can find this missing girl. And Tatiana Duggar needs you. She went missing from Oakland, California on the 8th of January. So for almost two weeks now, she hasn't been in contact with any of her family or friends. She'd been seen in Oakland with a man called Marcus. All of her stuff was still in her hotel room. Her car was still at her hotel. And she hasn't been on social media once. Her family is really concerned about her well-being. So share this even with one person. That one person you share it with could be the one person that knows something. TikTok, this missing girl needs your help. Alicia Navarro is a 16-year-old high-functioning autistic girl from Glendale, Arizona. And she disappeared in the early morning hours of September last year. She left a note saying, I ran away. I will be back. I swear. I'm sorry. But she hasn't come back. So it's widely believed that she was groomed and lured in by an online predator. She was really into gaming. She had connections all over the world because of this. So blow this up because as many people as possible need to see this. They might know her. No matter where they're from. Things you didn't know about psychopaths, part two. Number three blew my mind. Number one, they have a terrible sense of smell. The way their brains are made up, the higher they score on psychopathy, the lower their brain's ability to identify different smells. Imagine not being able to smell your favorite smell. Number two, in romantic relationships, they will always want to be the dominant partner. They want to maintain their superiority in the relationship. <laughs> Gets you thinking. Number three, Yawns aren't contagious for psychopaths. Yawns are weird anyway, right? Like if I think about yawning or I see someone yawning, I can't help but yawn. But that's not the case for psychopaths. What? Comment if you yawned. Or more interestingly, comment if you didn't. <laughs> There's a little girl disappear and then nine days later show up dead in her own room. Paulette Chabarra was a four-year-old girl with disabilities from Mexico. In March of 2010, she disappeared and the searches began. They searched inside the home five times. No sign of a struggle, no sign of forced entry, no sign of Paulette. Paulette's mother did an interview in Paulette's room, sitting on the bed. With whole news crews in there. And people had slept in this bed a few days after Paulette disappeared. But what's chilling about this is this is the room that Paulette's body was found. In fact, she was found wrapped in blankets and wedged at the foot of her bed. Experts said she couldn't have been there for longer than three days, but she'd been missing for nine days. Her official cause of death was asphyxiation. So let's get into some theories. Theory one, Paulette's mother killed Paulette because of her disability, and she seemed sketchy and uninterested in the whole thing. Number two, Paulette's father killed Paulette. Number three, it was a staged kidnapping by both of the parents due to financial issues. Number four, the nannies did it because they were the ones that found her, and they had also made the bed in the days after she disappeared. Theory five, accidental asphyxiation. Comment your thoughts. Was this little boy his own grandfather? Sam Taylor was born soon after his grandfather died, so they never met. But Sam was only 18 months old and he told his father, when I was your age, I used to change your diapers. Sam went into insane detail on things he couldn't have known. About things like his sister, who by the way, he claims to have turned into a fish. And his sister had died. In fact, she had been murdered by her husband 60 years prior. <laughs> and she had been dumped into a bay. Like a fish. What do you think about this? If you ever thought of being a real estate agent, this might just put you off. Lindsay Buziak was a real estate agent who had a showing with a weird couple. They were putting on fake Spanish accents and acting really sketchy. After the viewing, Lindsay was found stabbed to death on the floor in the master bedroom. In 2017 though, a public message was put up on a forum for Lindsay and it said the following. I killed Lindsay and stupid cops will never prove it. Her murder is unsolved to this day. However, last month the police released the fact that they know who set up the appointment. Click the plus sign for any more updates because I'm sure there will be some soon. Comment what case you want to see next. 
50 year cold case might get solved. Susan Long went out dancing on her last night alive. The next day she was found dead on a country lane. She'd been sexually assaulted and strangled. She was seen getting on a bus that night, but it's unknown where she got off. Police do have DNA though, and they know that whoever sexually assaulted her has a rare blood type. Her killer has walked free for 50 years and they believe that they could solve it soon. If there is an update, I will definitely post it. So click the plus sign so you don't miss out. And I will do the first case request that comes up in the comments. To Trigger warning, sexual violence. And when Paul grew up, he sexually assaulted so many people that he became known as the Scarborough Rapist. Soon he became involved with none other than his own Barbie, Carla Homoka. He became obsessed with her 15 year old sister, Tammy, masturbating in her room while she was asleep, kind of obsessed. He drugged and raped her on more than one occasion and Carla didn't just let it happen, but she helped. One time it went too far because Tammy started vomiting from all the alcohol they'd fed her and she died. They did similar to two other 15 year olds and one 14 year old. Anyway, he went to prison. But something I didn't realize until today was Carla got out in 2005 at the age of 35. Kim Kardashian's son, a reincarnated version of her dad, Robert Kardashian. When the Kardashians were in Bali, a blind medium came up to Kim and told her son that was a reincarnated version of her father. And she had. Sam. According to Kim, countless people have come up to either her or the nannies and said that Sam is a family member reincarnated. They kind of look alike and they're both left-handed apparently. So do you think that this baby was OJ Simpson's lawyer? I can't wait till he properly starts talking. <laughs> you like being frustrated? Keep watching. Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry and Gina Jesus disappeared for 10 years and were actually found. They were approached each a year apart by a man that they knew in a vehicle. They all accepted their respective lifts and they weren't seen again for 10 years. I just did a full YouTube video on what actually happened to them, so go check it out, it's linked on my page. And click the plus sign for more true crime. The little boy proved his past life death certificate wrong. At the age of four, Ryan Hammond started having vivid nightmares where his heart was exploding. As a kid, he described being a Hollywood director in the 40s in intricate detail. And one day Ryan came across a picture and he said, that's me. This man was Marty Martin, who died of a heart attack, just like Ryan's nightmares. Ryan said he died at the age of 61, but Marty's birth cert said he died at the age of 59. When they dug and found Marty's birth cert, they found out that Ryan was actually right. Like, this guy got missing because he had information about another missing person case. David Dwayne Bell went missing in July 1986. According to police, he may have had information about the disappearance of Shannon Green, who went missing just a few days before he did from the same area. I believe he might have been killed so that he couldn't go to police. John Rainier is the main suspect. He's convicted murderer, sex offender, and former family friend of Dwayne Bell's family. John says that Dwayne actually confessed to killing Shannon. Would be a nice little cop out. But I don't know, what do you guys think? Things like this that just make me not want to get married. In October 2004, Rachel O'Reilly was bludgeoned to death in her home in Dublin. Almost unrecognizable. A few days later, her devastated husband Joe went to the home with Rachel's family. He invited them into the room she was killed in and he said, come on, I'll show you what the murderer must have done. And yeah, you guessed it, he reenacted it. He was enjoying pretending to murder her in the exact same spot that she was murdered, right in front of her family. Safe to say, he was found guilty of her murder. This never happens in Ireland, especially in the country. This is Bobby Ryan, or his stage name, Mr. Moonlight, from Tipperary. On the 2nd of June, 2011, he disappeared and would never be seen alive again. At the time, he was seeing a woman called Mary Lowry, who he actually spent the night with the night before he disappeared. But Mary Lowry had an admirer called Patrick Quirk, who had actually been the man that she had an affair with before her actual husband died. Two years after Bobby's disappearance, Patrick found his body on Mary Lowry's farm. So who was responsible? This case is not cut and dry, but I have a full video on it on my YouTube channel. There are so many twists and turns. It's like, <sighs> it only came out that this guy was dead when they found a part of his leg. Charlotte Mulhall had been drinking and doing drugs with her mother, Kathleen, and her mother's boyfriend, Farah. Then Farah started touching Kathleen inappropriately, which Charlotte's still there. So this caused a big verbal altercation. Allegedly, Kathleen said, just kill him for me. So Charlotte slashed his throat with a Stanley knife and went on to stab him 27 times. Then her sister, Linda, whacked him over the head several times with a hammer, then dismembered and disposed of his body in the Royal Canal in Dublin. To avoid him being identified, Kathleen took his head in a bag on a bus. She went through the square shopping center which I always used to go to as a kid and she buried it. Click the plus sign if for some reason you want to see more content like this. Wait he did what? Yeah he sexually assaulted her and tried to murder her in the mountains. Stop. Yeah and he only served 10 years of his 15 year sentence. So he's a free man? Yeah. <sighs> but he's a person of interest in eight missing women's cases from the 90s that all disappeared from near his hometown. So it kind of looks like he murdered them. Well, in the 80s, a newborn baby was found dead on a beach in Kerry. Right, yeah, murdered, right? 
Yeah, but then two weeks later, another baby was found on the family farm of Joanne Hayes. Oh, had this Joanne Hayes been pregnant? Like, Yeah, but she wasn't anymore. And didn't have a baby. <laughs> so then Joanne confessed to choking her own baby so it would stop crying. Seriously? Kind of. It ended up being a false confession. The baby was a stillborn. Oh, and the baby on the beach? <sighs> never identified. His murderer was never identified. It's a total mystery. Truly the worst. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did you know the nuns used to run these prisons, basically, where they abused young women because they had children out of wedlock? Hang on, what? Yeah, they forced them into slave labour, they beat them if they didn't do things fast enough. They even took their babies away. Wait, did they kill the babies or something? God. Did you do anything else? Well, yeah, so he kidnapped this girl, Kara, in broad daylight. Whoa. Yeah, and he assaulted her for hours. Assaulted as in... But she managed to escape. And he got away or shot himself? No. But then the police found out he was responsible for three local murders. It's one of the sketchiest things I've ever heard and it's an Irish case. On New Year's Day in 2008, Amy Fitzpatrick, who was living in Spain at the time, went missing. She was seen with an older man the night she disappeared. He was believed to be an Irish gangland killer called Lucky, who some people believe killed her. But to this day, nobody's been found and there are no answers. There was a ransom call at one point for 500,000 euro. It was looked into, no answers. But it's this next part that gets me. Five years after her disappearance, her brother was stabbed to death by her stepdad. It's pretty unlucky for one family to have two isolated incidents like that. But then there are people who think that she was killed by this gangland guy. And there are also people who think she was abducted into sex trafficking. Apparently people in the area that she's from believe that her stepdad did it. But her mother is adamant he didn't. I don't know, what do you think? Not what you would expect from a leisurely walk in the mountains. A woman was walking her dog in the Dublin mountains and the dog was bringing her bones and everything. She thought they were animal bones. A few weeks later, she went back and the dog was still doing it, but this time it brought some clothing. They found they were the bones of Elaine O'Hara, who had gone missing just over a year prior. Hang in there, there's more. Elaine had accessed this adult fetish website. She'd been in a lot of contact with a man called Graeme Dwyer. These two had had a sexual relationship for a while involving knives, violence and bondage. But let's have a look at his texts. One of Graham's texts to Elaine said, I would like to stab a girl to death sometime. Evidently, life in prison, by bit. But he still gets bombarded with love letters from women who idolize him. Can we not? This is a case of Christian and yeah. So this is a case of Christian and yeah. Oh my God, I can't say his name. <laughs> so this is the case of Christian and Invest, in, oh wow. Invest, investigative. Invest, oh my God. One of the key investigat one of the key investigative <laughs> one of the key investigative t uh, I'm nearly done. Investig investigative Oh my god. <laughs> one of the key investigative reports Yes. Christian was prematurely ended. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like and comment down below what your thoughts were on one or several of these cases. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at KatePhilpot underscore YT. And other than that, I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys.